What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be talking about wood roof construction in Revit and I'm actually going to be showing you that on two examples, not one. So when it comes to creating roofs in Revit it's actually quite easy. The roof tool is really intuitive and really functional and you can achieve some amazing results when it comes to creating roofs but taking that simple Revit roof and adding construction to it can be extremely difficult. So in this tutorial I wanted to show you a couple of approaches to creating roofs in Revit, uh, uh, wooden roofs to be exact, but you can pretty much use the same approach for let's say some sort of a steel uh, or roof or something like that. Uh, so I'm going to be showing you the first approach where I'm going to be using a structural truss or actually multiple structural trusses to create a roof and the second one will be more of a traditional typical roof with rafters. Okay, so that's what this tutorial is going to be all about. Now before I get into that, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial, it helps me out with the YouTube algorithm and also make sure to subscribe. I make useful Revit tutorials each week. I make multiple tutorials and also I make one advanced Balkan architect course. Now all of my courses, over 50 hours of content, can be found on my Patreon, first link in the description and there also you can uh, get access to all of my Revit project files like these roofs that I'm creating right now and plus like 500 more Revit project files. Okay, so without, uh, with that out of the way, without any further ado, let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so let's get started. Here we are in Revit and I'm just going to start off a new model project, just click here, and then I'm going to be using the architectural template for this one. I'm going to open it up and before we do anything let's load in the components that we're going to be using for uh, this construction. So for that I'm going to go here to insert and then let's go into load family and here in the US metric library I'm just going to scroll all the way down and find structural framing. Open that up and here let's go to wood. Of course this is going to be a wood construction and I'm just going to go with uh, the timber option open that up and here we have to choose uh, some sizes so for this let's go with something like let's see so we have the one for these here we have these uh, let's go with one uh, one of these larger ones and then I'm going to choose another smaller option here as well so something like this perhaps. Okay, so once we have chose this, uh, cho chose the, these options, I can just click here. Okay, and now those are loaded into the project. Okay, so once we have them loaded into the project, it's time to start constructing our construction. And for that, we need to go here to structure, and then here we need to go to truss. Now, when I open this up, you're going to notice that we don't really have any trusses loaded in, so I'm going to load one in. Uh, we have to go back a few folders to get, go back to the US metric library, scroll down, and now we need to go to structural trusses. So here uh, we need to choose one, so let's go with the one of the simpler ones. Let's see, what do we have here? Yeah, maybe let's go with this one. Hit open. And once we've opened that up, we can place one immediately. So let's place one like this over here in the center of the screen and then we can maybe go inside of the 3D view just to see what we have. So as you can see here we have a timber truss. Now before we start playing around let's adjust it a little bit. So I'm going to go here to the properties panel for this truss, scroll down a little bit. So here we have the truss height 1, so that's this height over here and then we have the main truss height which is this one at the middle. So the one in the middle I'm going to leave as is and the one here at the uh, edges I'm going to drop down to 1200 millimeters, hit apply. As you can see now we have a bit of a steeper roof. The next thing that I'm going to be uh, doing is changing this truss just a little bit. So if I uh, go over here and uh, let's see, let's uh, just select one of these uh, one of these timber elements. So I'm going to hover over the truss, hit the tab key once to make a selection, and now as you can see this is the 140 by 140. So that was the one that was loaded in here perhaps first, so that's the one that uh, this truss adopted, but that's not what I want to use. So what I'm going to do is just select this truss, go into edit type, and then let's change the top cord as well as the bottom cord to make it a bit thicker. So for the top cord, let's go here to structural framing type, 
set framing type and let's choose the thicker one. Same thing here on the bottom chord. Hit apply, click OK. And now as you can see that is a bit thicker than the ones that are on the inside. Now also I want to make the the ones on the edges thicker. So for that, we have to do that a bit manually. So first let's unpin all of these elements. You're going to notice that if I select one of these, they're pinned in place. Now it takes a long time to unpin all individually. So what I like to do is to select all of them, go into filter, uh, and then just uncheck structural trusses, hit apply, okay. And then I just go here to the unpin option on the modify tab on the modify panel, just click unpin or use the UP shortcut. And there we go. Okay, so once we have this, I'm just going to select this one here. So just hover over it, hit the tab key once, make the selection, and then let's go over here, hit the tab key once, hold the control key to add to selection one while selecting, and then here in the properties, we can change it for the wider one. Okay, so once we have all of this uh, done, now we can start playing around with it and just fixing it up. So what we need to do is just select it and then fix it up like this. We have to extend it here, extend it here. We have to extend this one as well. Maybe like that. Extend the bottom one to kind of cover the whole thing. So you basically have to go all around and just adjust all of these. It takes a bit of time, but you will have a better thrust. And also keep in mind that once we do this for the first one, we can just copy that one and there's uh, no need to repeat this whole process again. So let's select this one, extend it a little bit, and so on and so forth. Now, once you've done that for the whole truss, what you need to do is you need to go here to the Modify panel and then go to the Geometry panel and then go to Cope. Now, we select first the uh, chord and then the top, and now, as you can see, it gets that cut. Same thing here. So we select first this and then this, and then it gets the cut. Then this one, then the chord this one and the chord and then this one and the vertical one and it kind of fixes it up like that same thing here you want to do the same uh, thing and also here there we go looks a lot nicer so you basically want to repeat this process for the rest of the of the truss now i'm not going to show all of that because i don't want to waste your time but you get the point so you basically just want to repeat that Okay, so now once I have applied the coping, or basically adjusting all of this, uh, the whole truss, I can select the truss, go into level one perhaps, and then here I can go just to the copy tool, and then I can copy it multiple times. So let's copy it by the interval of four meters. So that's 4,000 millimeters, maybe one more. And there we go. Okay, now let's navigate here in this 3D view. Okay, so once we have all of the trusses done, now it's time to place uh, some sort of a wood construction running uh, lengthwise here. So to do something like that, what we need to do is we need to uh, go here to the structure tab, and then we need to find the beam system tool. So once you select the beam system tool, the next thing that you need to do is you need to go here to properties and make some adjustments. So first the spacing should be a lot smaller. So let's go with something like 60 centimeters or uh, 600 millimeters. Uh, also here for the beam type, I'm going to uh, go with the smaller one, which is 140 by 140. Hit apply and there we go. Next, we need to set up our work plane. So the work plane isn't going to be horizontal, it's going to be sloped, as you can see over here. So we need to go here to set work plane and then go with the pick a plane option, click OK. And then you want to pick this sloped plane over here. And now it's time to sketch out the beam system, which should look something like this. So you want to start off from this corner and then go all the way to this corner. So once you have that, the next thing that we need to set up is the beam direction. So go here to beam direction. You can use a simple line, go from midpoint to midpoint. There we go. And now we have our beam direction. And now if we just hit finish, there we go. We have our we have our beam system. Now, of course, this beam system should be lying on top of this. So we need to fix that up. So what I'm going to do now is do we have some sort of an offset here? We don't. So in that case, what we need to do is go back into level one, 
uh, create a section. So just go here up on the quick access toolbar, find the section tool, and then create a simple section like this. Hit the escape key a couple of times and then just double click the, uh, the arrowhead. Okay, so in order to see this a lot better, we need to switch it to the fine level of detail. There we go. Now select the beam system. Uh, so make sure to select here on top when it says structural beam system. Select it and then you can use just the move tool and basically move it from here upward. Okay, uh, it seems to be locked in place. Okay, so we do have that problem. So what can we do in that case is just uh, disassociate it from the work plane and then go to move and now hopefully it will move there we go if I just go into thin lines yeah it's aligned perfectly so we have our beam system there then we need to mirror it to the other side so we can select it go with the pick uh, access option mm is the shortcut find the center line and mirror it to the other side and now if I just go into 3D, it looks something like this. At this point, it's a good idea to add the actual roof. So what I'm going to do for that is just go here to the roof tool, choose roof by extrusion, uh, go with pick a plane option, click OK, and then pick one of these planes over here, like this one. Then you can choose the level, either level 1 or level 2, doesn't really matter in this case, it's just a demonstration. Now for this, I want to use, let's say, this uh, generic 125 millimeter roof. So what I'm going to do is go with pick lines and give it a 125 millimeter offset. And then you just need to pick this line here, pick this line here, just make sure that it offsets above. And then you can just use trim and extend to trim and extend to quarter like that. And then you can extend it as long as it's necessary. So just extend it, make sure you just extend it in the same direction. And now once you hit finish, as you can see, this is what you get. Now, of course, we have to extend it a little bit to the other side, just like that. Extend it here. And there we go. We have a pretty good looking roof with a, an accurate roof construction underneath. Now let's move on to the second type of construction. And this one is going to be a lot simpler and easier. So what I'm going to do now is go here into level one scroll out a little bit maybe we can create it somewhere over here now this one uh, is simpler because we already start with a roof so I'm just going to go here to roof by footprint let's leave it at level one and then just create a simple rectangle just like that now I'm going to hit the escape key a couple of times to escape out of that then select the top one and the bottom one these lines and then here we have the option to uncheck define slope so as you can see, this little triangle is gone over here. And now once I hit finish and go into 3D, this is the type of roof that we get. So once I have created this, uh, if I just select it and go here in the properties panel, if I scroll down a little bit, you'll notice that here we have the option to control the slope. So I can maybe set it at 20 degrees. And as you can see, that's what it looks like. So now we can use this roof in order to place our beam system on it. So for example, if I just go here to structure, go to beam system, and then I can just go to set work plane, go with pick a plane option, click OK, and just select this plane on the bottom. And then uh, if I just go and place a simple rectangle from here to there, there we go. The beam direction, as you can see from these two lines, is already in the right direction for this type of a roof. So I can just hit the finish. And there we go. We have a perfect uh, beam system. Maybe I can select this beam system and maybe change the spacing to 800 millimeters. Yeah, I think this looks maybe a bit better. Now, of course, we can select it, go into, I don't know, level two. There we go. Use the mirror option with the pick access. And there we go. Go back into 3D and this is what we have. Now at this point you can just leave it as is, but usually you are going to have a few more elements in your roof construction. So what I like to do is I like to add a horizontal connection between these two beams. So for something like that, what I tend to do is uh, the, the simplest uh, option I, I found so far was just to go to architecture and just model it in place. Now, once you do, the, the, do this, you make sure to pick the category correctly. So I want to categorize this correctly. So I want to keep it at, as structural framing. So make sure to check that. Click OK. And then here we're going to go to set work plane. Go with the pick plane option. Click OK. And then just pick this face over here, the horizontal one. 
Next, we can just go with a simple extrusion, start off from somewhere over here, make sure it's horizontal, go here, then follow the slope of the roof a little bit, go down a little bit, and then we can go the other way. Okay, so once we have this, let's select both of these lines, go to mirror, but this time with the draw access function, find the middle point, and just mirror it around. And then here we just need to use trim and extend to fix it up. Now, once I hit finish, you're going to notice that here uh, it's just extruded, but it's way too large. So let's drop it down to 40 millimeters. There we go. Looks a bit more realistic. And now also I want to mirror it to the other side. So let's go maybe in level two. Uh, turn on wireframe as well as fine level of detail. There we go. Okay, so now if you lose selection, and here we can't select it because this is just an underlay, you can right click and then go to select previous. And there we go, now it's selected. Now also I'm going to mirror this again using the draw access tool. So just find the midpoint and then mirror it like this. Okay, let's go back into 3D, hit finish, there we go. Or actually, before we continue, let's go back into edit in place and just set the material. So here for the material, let's go into the material browser, find the timber. Okay, so it's only this gray, so let's try wood. So let's go with the lumber for this one. Okay, let's hit finish. There we go. Okay, and now the only thing that we need to do is just array this across the board. So for that, select it, go into level two, and then uh, here we need to count how many uh, instances we have. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay, so you just go here to array. It's going to be a linear array number is 15, move to last, start off from somewhere here, and then just go all the way to the back. And this is what we have. So we have a perfectly good looking construction. Maybe we can go here, turn on uh, reading or realistic mode. There we go. I think this looks really good. Okay, so those are the two approaches for creating roofs in Revit or creating the construction for roofs in Revit. If you want to download these project files as well as all of my other Revit project files, check out my Patreon, first link in the description. There you can also find all of my advanced courses, I've got over 50 hours of content. Okay, so that's pretty much it, thank you for watching and have a nice day.